Hi again everyone, I'm Chris Tisdale and I'm a mathematician at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. And in this presentation, I'm going to give a basic introduction to Minkowski's inequality. And in particular, uh, I'm going to state a special case in Rn and I'm going to present a proof of the result. Now Minkowski's inequality has a lot of applications in mathematics. I'll discuss some of those applications in other videos. And in particular, one of the motivations uh, for putting this presentation together was using elements of Minkowski's work in my own research. And I'll present those on YouTube um, in due course. Now to understand this presentation, you don't need to know a lot of mathematics. In fact, I'm sure that a talented high school student, a final year high school student, could easily understand a lot of the ideas in this presentation. So let's get started. Let these boldface A and B be vectors in Rn. Now throughout this presentation, whenever you see boldface letters, they represent vectors. Here they're written out in their component form, just as um, rows. To, uh, and I've used rows instead of columns just to save a little bit of space. Now the following result is due to a mathematician called Minkowski who proved the result around 1900. In particular, this lemma will be the main focus of this presentation. So let B, P be a number that's greater than or equal to 1. Then, for all pairs of vectors, a and b in Rn, we have the following inequality. Now, this looks rather abstract on a first uh, viewing. So, a couple of points to sort of break it down into um, simple parts. The way I think of in inequality 1 is just a, uh, it's just a general form of a triangle inequality. So, Inequality 1 is a general triangle inequality. And if you want to just discuss a, the most basic case, let's say P equals 1 and N equals 1. Then Minkowski's inequality, well, these, these uh, powers just sort of disappear, and so do the sums. And Minkowski's inequality becomes the following. Basic triangle inequality, okay? You would see this inequality either in high school or perhaps in first year uh, university. So that's Minkowski's um, result. And whenever I refer to Minkowski's inequality, I mean the inequality 1 here. So let's talk about the, uh, the proof. Now, for the proof, I'm going to need uh, another inequality attributed to a mathematician called Holder. Now, Holder, um, it's custom to... to, to put this result down to Holder, although a year before another ma mathematician called Rogers uh, proved a, a slightly different um, inequality. And reference 3 here is a recent YouTube presentation of um, my own uh, centred around Holder's inequality. And I said in that video that I would give some applications of Holder's inequality uh, to various aspects of mathematics. Well this um, video can be very loosely regarded as an application of Holder's inequality. Okay, so suppose P and Q are numbers both strictly greater than 1 and they're linked via this equation, so they both satisfy this equation. Then for all vectors, X and Y, we have the following inequality. So this inequality here, inequality 3, is known as Holder's inequality. Okay, so let's see how we prove 
inequality one. And essentially there are two cases to consider. The case p equals one, well, if we, the case p equals one uh, up here, these powers sort of disappear. And what you do is you start with this basic triangle inequality and then you sum both sides. So if I was to sum both sides, summing from i equals one to i equals n, then you can keep the inequality and you can distribute the summation side. And in fact, this is Minkowski's inequality for the case when p equals one. So that was very easy. Now the more challenging part of the proof is the case when p is strictly greater than one. And for that, we're going to apply this um, Holder's inequality. Now, instead of proving inequality one directly, what we're going to do is actually prove this inequality five. Okay, so we're now discussing the case where p is strictly greater than one, and instead of directly proving this, we're going to prove this. And um, proving this inequality then implies that this inequality must hold. And the reason is that this is always greater than or equal to this. Okay, again, that's just a, a, a consequence of a simple triangle rule. So what we're doing is we're showing that something that's larger than that is actually smaller than that. So this inequality must hold. Okay, so um, just to sort of uh, confirm that this really is greater than or equal to this, you can start, for example, with the basic triangle inequality and then what you can do is you can take both sides to the power p and keep the inequality And then what you can do is you can sum up both sides, again, keeping the same inequality. And then you can take the whole thing to the power one on P, again, keeping the same inequality. So if you do that, what you end up with is something like this. Again, I'm just summing over from I equals one to N. Okay, so this inequality really does hold. Okay, so let's get to work proving inequality five here. And it's just a, a simple algebra, really. So we start with this, and then we can break, up, break it up and sort of expand uh, the first bracket. Then what we can do is sum both sides of this expression and now what we can do is apply Holder's inequality to this sum and this sum separately. Okay so we've got sort of a product in here and we're going to apply Holder's inequality to this sum and this sum. Okay, well, if you do that, then you'll come up with the following. This inequality is from here, and this inequality is here. And for example, in the first uh, sum, essentially I've just applied Holder's inequality there with xi equals absolute ai, which is non-negative, and 
innate yi is just the following. Again, that's non-negative. Okay, so if xi and yi are both non-negative, then we can actually get rid of all the absolute value signs in here, and that's the form of Holder's inequality that we're applying. Okay, so we come up with this, and similarly in 9, uh, the yi is the same, your x sub i is just absolute b sub i, which again, non-negative. Okay, so this has got to be less than or equal to this plus this. Okay, just continuing on from 7. Now notice we've got a common factor, so we can take that common factor out. And what we can do then to this bottom line is just rearrange, so take this to the other side. Uh, but before we do that, we'll do that in a minute, you can see here what's happened is the power has been simplified. So P minus 1 bracket Q is just equal to Q, uh, sorry, P because of these conditions on P and Q in Holder's inequality. Okay, so you simplify the power and you get this, then let's bring this to the other side, okay? Okay, we get this now. What we can do is simplify the left-hand side. Essentially, on the left-hand side, you get something like this. Just using your exponent laws, and of course, one minus one on Q, is just going to be 1 on P, just again from this condition here. So the left hand side then, in this inequality, is just the following. So what we've done is we have shown inequality 5 holds and therefore Minkowski's inequality must also hold. So that's a statement of the result and a proof. Here are some of the details of the references that I listed throughout this presentation. Now notice that I don't have a dedicated reference for um, Minkowski there. I did a bit of searching, I couldn't find any particular reference to Minkowski's um, a, a paper of Minkowski. I do um, realise that he wrote a, an influential book around 1910, but um, I couldn't find a, a dedicated paper or a dedicated reference um, to one of his works where um, the famous inequality is, uh, is um, stated. Now perhaps you have some knowledge about Minkowski's papers or some of his books and where we can find the, uh, the inequality that we've discussed through this presentation. If so, then post a comment in the uh, comment section.